In this video, I will teach you how to stop running out of time on your SAT or your ACT. If you feel like your only hurdle is timing, I'm here to help. I'm Kat Severson, the inventor of the Severson Method, a scientifically proven way to learn anything fast. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The SAT and the ACT are really ruthlessly timed. And if you don't have extra time, you don't have accommodations for extra time, which means you don't have any learning disability, then you're going to be taking it under really strict timing conditions. A lot of my students, before they start working with me, don't train under those strict conditions. It's almost like they need to run a timed race, which is, let's say it's a six mile race and they need to make it in 20 minutes. And what they're preparing for is a jog for six miles without time. Yeah, they, you know, they can jog for six miles, but that would take them 35 minutes or 45 minutes. A lot of my students have really poor sense of time and that's not their fault. Our brain is generally terrible at telling time. We don't have an area in our brain that's dedicated towards this sense, this sense of time. We have an area of the brain that's dedicated to sight, to um, hearing, to smelling, to thinking, but nothing towards sensing time. And there is a reason for it. Evolution. Think about it. The first clock has become a household norm back in 17th century. 17th century! It's like two days ago compared to the history of humanity and brain development. We have been seeing things and smelling things and hearing things for thousands of years. So the brain has already perfected those functions and we're years and years uh, behind when it comes to sensing time. And especially if you're doing something where your brain is engaged, you absolutely lose this ability to tell how much time have passed or how much time is left. So when my students are training for the math section, for the reading section, for the science section, I train them to do those things in time. But it all begins with us talking about how much time do you actually have. And since I'm answering this question, well, Katya, how much time do I have per question? How much time do I have for per question? I uh, usually, when I have to do something more than two, three times a day, I try to automate it. And I asked one of my associates to create an Excel spreadsheet that will help you calculate how much time you have per section. So I want you to come alongside me and I'm going to show you how to use this tool. So now let me show you the timer. The timer is, this Excel spreadsheet, super easy to use. There's a link down there below where you can get it. No sign in required. Don't give me your email, just use it. It's, it's a really cool nifty tool. So um, you, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go and you wanna pick the time. Please select your testing time. And in here you have a little blurb that explains to you what testing time is. If you don't know anything about um, extended time or extended extra time, chances are your regular time. Um, extended time is for kids with um, learning disabilities who have approved by the doctor extended time. And if you are already getting extended time in school, you should be getting it from the ACT as well. And these are your sections, English section. If you're a regular time, your, your time is going to be 45 minutes. So your time 45, number of questions. Altogether you have 75 questions on the English section. And what is this, time for Scantron? What in the world? So time for Scantron is a um, time you need to fill out a Scantron. If you remember, um, if you've taken the ACT or the SAT before, it's a standardized test. And the way you answer questions is you have to pencil in, you have to pencil in, in the circles, your right answers. And that takes time. You need to fill out 75 circles. What I recommend for my students is to get a pencil that is kind of dull to make it faster. But also we practice just filling out the Scantron. 
um, it's available online you can just print it out and um, fill it out just practice doing it what I recommend as well is that you take the whole section and then you fill out the Scantron instead of going from questions to the Scantron from questions to the Scantron you work on the questions and then you fill out the Scantron therefore you need to leave some time and I say 180 seconds is a good amount of time for you to fill out the Scantron so now we don't have 45 minutes we only have 42 minutes for for uh, 45 questions for 75 questions so 45 minus 180 seconds which is 3 minutes 42 now we have 40, 42 minutes for 75 questions we only have 34 seconds per question and when you're practicing taking your English section I want you to practice to take it in 34 seconds or under but quite frankly English section is not everyone's Achilles heel math is one of those sections where students spend time on silly questions and waste time quite frankly and they can never get it back so here's the same thing if you're regular time you have 60 minutes total and you have 60 questions you would think I have a minute per question not quite because I want you to spend as much as 180 seconds filling out the Scantron you don't want to run out of time because of the Scantron so you have 57 seconds per question and what I would do with you is I would make you solve math problems in under a minute I would give you five quite difficult math problems and I would expect you to solve all five in five minutes and if you're not doing that that means your strategy is off that means the way you're looking at the problem you're taking a long time to find the right path to solve the problem especially if you're going for the top score you have to train yourself you have to look for solutions next your reading section in the reading section you have passages you have four passages some of them are a little bit longer the paired passage for example you have 35 minutes and you have 40 questions you have four passages because you only have 40 questions not 60 I suggest that you give yourself 120 seconds for filling out the Scantron you don't need as much time and that would leave you with 8 minutes and 15 seconds per passage what I would do is I would use this timer which is called motivator or I would use my favorite time timer to time you and to get you to the point where reading a passage and answering 10 questions after the passage is done in under eight minutes you need to train yourself you need to be ready because that's the time you're given next you want to look at the science section sure science section for the um, ACT same same exact thing but the number of passages is larger you're given six passages you have 40 questions six passages again because 40 questions I'm only gonna give you 120 seconds to fill out the Scantron so per passage you have five minutes and 30 seconds and you have 50 seconds per question so if you are not getting through some passages in five minutes and 30 seconds you need to look for a better strategy in fact with my students that are very high scoring ACT students we take this motivator and I set it up as four minutes and I put this on their belt and it buzzes every four minutes they try to go through some passages especially the data representation passages that are shorter and faster they try to go through them in four minutes or under you train yourself that's how you stop running out of time but um, just knowing how much time you have is key the same thing is for the uh, SAT what you want to do is you want to first go and pick your time regular time extended time extra time and these are your uh, SAT sections no uh, no essay oh no uh, no science section here reading section if you are regular time that means you don't have accommodations then you're gonna have 65 minutes and 52 questions you're gonna get five passages well because it's 52 questions 
let's say you are going to need, hmm, let's do 180. 180 seconds to fill out the Scantron. Now, you have 12 minutes and 24 seconds for passage. Now, if you get faster and you train yourself to fill out the Scantron in a minute, your time per passage will go up. So if you want to invest time in filling out the Scantron in a fast and vigorous way, sure, go invest time in that. But I want you to know how much time you realistically have. So my students, I've seen it time and time again where uh, my students that are just starting with me and aren't aware of the timing issue, they would be solving a paragraph, they will be looking at a passage, they'll be looking at a problem without keeping the time in mind. And 12 minutes that, are, that they are supposed to be spending on the passage, uh, those 12 minutes turn into 13, 14, and 15, and they're not even aware that this is sabotaging their future performance. If you're going to be taking 15 minutes per passage on each passage, by the time you get to the fifth passage, you only have time to read the questions and read the passage. You don't have time to answer. You don't have time to think. You don't have time to fill out the Scantron. And that's the last thing you want. You don't want to solve everything and not be able to fill out the Scantron. And the SAT College Board, they're very strict about it. They're not going to let you go back and fill out the Scantron. Mm -mm. You're not allowed to touch uh, with your pencil anything on the Scantron that is from a different section. So be very aware of that. Now, language and writing, again, if you have regular time, it's 35 minutes and your time is 35 minutes, 44 questions. For 44 questions, I think 120 seconds is enough. So you have 45 seconds per question. Then you have two math parts, one without calculator and another one is with. But here on the SAT, you have another time suck, which is your grid-in. Grid-ins take time. If you don't know what gradients are, you're not very well prepared for the SAT. This is where you need to fill in your answer. So on average, I think it takes just a little bit longer. So we would allocate 30 extra seconds to fill out the gradients in this section and in this section. So altogether, you have 58 seconds per question on the math section. And here on the with calculator section, you have 83 seconds per question. So when you're training yourself to answer these questions, when you are writing flashcards, when you are, are practicing, make sure that you can get to the answer within these time constraints. Can I get to the answer in 80 seconds or less? If I can, I'm ready. If I can't, I need to be looking for another way. So this is how you go through this process of stopping running out of time, predicting that you need time to fill out the Scantron, and practicing to solve problems, to read passages, to look at problems and identify, look at answer choices, identify which ones are traps, which ones are correct, and um, winning time. You could do this. I believe in you. Let me know what exam you're preparing for. L let me know which section is the worst for you in terms of time and don't forget every month we choose a lucky person a lucky winner to get on a free call with me um, maybe I'll help you with your timing issue maybe maybe I'll help you and tutor you on uh, a section and that will improve your score so leave a comment below and uh, I'll see you guys soon bye